Hello and welcome to our daily devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Adam Moline. Today we're going to take a look at the Gospel lesson appointed for the 10th Sunday after the Trinity. It comes to us from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 19. When Jesus drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. And he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And he was teaching daily in the temple. The chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the people were seeking to destroy him, but they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were hanging on his words. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friend in Christ, the things that make for peace. Jesus sells the city of Jerusalem that only if they knew the things that would make for peace. But they didn't. They had no idea what made for peace. It was not long after this that the words of Jesus were truly fulfilled. In the year 70 A.D., the future Roman Emperor Titus built a barricade around the entire city of Jerusalem. He would let people in to the Passover feast and celebration, but not let them out. It was just about this time of the year that finally the walls of the city were broached. The fighting took place city block to city block people barricaded themselves in the temple where they were killed, blood running inches deep over the entire temple mount. Somehow the temple itself set on fire, the limestone burning because of the heat of the flames. Everything that was Jerusalem was destroyed. How did this happen? The people didn't know how to make peace. They were constantly complaining about their rulers. They were even betraying his trust in them, rioting in the streets. The people made war, not peace. What is it that brings you peace, dear Christian? Do you know the things that bring peace? In our modern world, we have this idea that if we all hold hands and sing kumbaya together, everything will be fine. If we elect the right leaders, everything will be fine. If we make those who need to pay more taxes pay more taxes, everything will be fine. If we all do this, or if we all do that, everything will be fine. But that's not what makes peace. For there to be true peace, there must be sacrifice. That's why Christ has come. The people of Jerusalem had Jesus in their very midst, at the temple, the glory of the Lord. But they did not know the hour of their visitation. They didn't understand who Jesus was. Their leaders sought to destroy him, and they would. On a Friday that we call good, on a cross, near where the barricade would be built around the town. Jesus was stripped, beaten, nailed to a cross, killed, stabbed to make sure that he was good and dead and buried in a nearby tomb. 
And dear Christian, that's what made peace. Peace between you and God. Peace that passes all understanding. Peace that this world cannot and will never understand. For you see, in the death of Jesus, your sins were forgiven. In the death of Jesus, you were made well. In the death and resurrection of Jesus, you were granted eternal life in God's kingdom. Your sin no longer separates you from God. You can stand freely in His presence, see Him face to face. In fact, that's the very thing that happens here at church. We come and receive Christ the crucified and risen, in with and under bread and wine for forgiveness of sins. We hear God's Word knowing that where God's Word is, the Holy Spirit is present and at work among us. We have peace with God because of Jesus. And we come into his very presence here in his sanctuary. In the name of Jesus, amen.